Well, so let's go over introduction of functions to refresh our memory before going over the definition of limit of a function. Calculus, our objective. Functions. Very well. So review of functions. First of all, remember that we define functions to be machines or algorithm that they can take some input values and make some changes to those input values and give us some output values. So you have a function as a machine, algorithm, anything that you want to call it, it takes on some input values, x values, inputs, and it gives you some output values. There are some important functions. The very basic function that you work with was constant function. Well, a constant function, representation for a constant function was y equals to k or f of x is equal to k. k is just a fixed number. Very well, the graph of a constant function, x-axis, y-axis, is mainly like this. Here you have a straight line. Your y-value is fixed and your y-value is equal to k. As you can see, the domain of the function is negative infinity to positive infinity or r. Constant function, it didn't have anything that we were interested in. Then we introduced the identity function. Identity function, which is represented by y equals to x, or just f of x equals to x. Well, for this function, whatever your x value is, your y value is going to be the exact same value. So the graph of an identity function is like this. You have x-axis, you have y-axis, and this is your identity function. y equals to x, or f of x equals to x. As you can see, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're going to, for short, write d equals to negative infinity, to positive infinity, or just the real line. After identity function, we introduce the quadratic function. Let's talk about the linear function, then quadratic function. Linear function, y equals to mx plus b, or f of x equals to mx plus b. Depending on m or the slope, you get an increasing line, decreasing line, or horizontal line. Depending on m, which is slope, we have an increasing decreasing or a horizontal line. For each of cases, the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity or the domain is R. Guys, note that we're talking about functions. We do not consider 
the vertical line as the function. So then quadratic function. A quadratic function has equation y equals to a x squared plus bx plus c. Depending on a, it's either open up or it opens down. The graph opens up. If A is positive, opens down. If A is negative. In either case, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Or Let me say that, okay, in general, let us introduce polynomials. The general definition for a polynomial was y equals to a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to n minus 1 plus the rest of the terms a x a sub 1x plus a sub 0. a sub 1x plus a sub 0. Here you have a polynomial of degree n, and depending on the graph of the polynomial, whatever that graph is, of degree three and more, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. These are well-behaved or nice functions. If you increase the degree of the polynomial, you get more shapes in the middle. that we introduced more complicated functions like square root, the nth root, we talked about rational functions, we talked about logarithmic functions, sine, cosine, big functions, and so on. Very well. So let us talk about, for example, the radical function. Radical functions. Radical functions were divided into two different scenarios, different cases. If you have even index, for example, if you have square root of a quantity, in this case, to find the domain of this function, the domain is equal to, here, let me write this in shorthand, D, I need more space, the domain is equal to the set, we're going to use curly bracket, the set of all X values, such that with the condition that, the quantity is larger than or equal to zero. So you read it this way. The set of the set of all x values of x such that the quantity inside the radical is greater than equal to zero. Then you close the bracket. So if you have even in this a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, the eighth root, and so on. But in the case that you have odd indices, odd index, like the third root of a quantity, the radicand is inside the third root, then the domain is odd. 
negative infinity to positive infinity. We introduced rational functions. A rational function represented by y equals to p of x divided by q of x. To find the domain of a rational function, the denominator cannot be zero. Domain is the set of all x values such that q of x cannot be zero. You have to exclude all of x values that make q of x equal to zero. Okay, then we introduced uh, exponential function and their inverses, the logarithmic functions. Exponential functions, y equals to a to the power x. Okay, so depending on what do we have for a, if a is larger than one, you have an increasing graph. If A is in between zero and one, you get a decreasing graph. So the graph is either like this or the graph is like this. The domain of these types of functions is equal to R, negative infinity to positive infinity. The inverse of an exponential function, which we talked about in intermediate algebra, is logarithmic function. With the general definition, y equals to log of x with base a. So remember that for log function, it's very important. Whatever the quantity is, let's write this guy as p of x to make sure you know we, we can use any expression here. To find the domain of a logarithmic function, you have the set of all x values such that this quantity p of x is always larger than zero. This is a domain of logarithmic function. And eventually we introduce trig functions. Sine, cosine. sine of x or whatever the quantity is, y equal to cosine x or cosine of quantity, y equals to tangent of x, y equals to cotangent of x, and so on. Depending on the definition of sine, cosine, tangent, or cotangent, they have different domain. For example, for sine and cosine, the domain is r. These two functions continues from both sides. But for tangent and cotangent, we have vertical asymptotes that we have to get rid of because they make the denominator equal to zero. Tangent is sine over cosine, so it's going to be a rational function. We have to make sure the denominator is never zero. It means that, for example, in tangent, we have to ignore all of the angles that make sine and the denominator equal to zero, like zero, um, like pi, like two pi, and so on, for y equals to cotangent, since this is cosine, I'm sorry, I explained this one for this. For, for tangent, we have sine over cosine, so we need to make sure cosine is not zero. For y equals to cotangent, we need to make sure sine is not equal to zero. And then we define secant and cosecant, and the rest of the three functions. 